This year, the Volunteer State celebrates 225 years of statehood. In recognition of this milestone, the Tennessee State Museum is offering a special display of hand-picked items from its vast collection. Well, Cindy Carter visited the museum recently and is going to give us a tour of the Tennessee at 225 exhibit. Inside the Tennessee State Museum in Nashville, there's plenty, I mean plenty, of cool things to look at, learn about, and discover. 225 years worth, in fact. 225 years ago in 1796, Tennessee becomes the 16th state admitted to the United States. And so we really want to talk about this legacy of what it means to be a Tennessean, whether you moved here, whether you were born here. And we really wanted people to think about what are these themes that unite us um, in our connection as Tennesseans. To celebrate this milestone birthday, Museum Curator of Decorative Arts Annabeth Hayes and her colleagues created the Tennessee at 225 Highlights from the Collection exhibition, which is 100 carefully chosen artifacts pulled from the museum's extensive collection, which they feel give visitors the 411 on more than 225 years of Tennessee history. We have listed the 100 objects and we have color coded them by the theme. And so as you, you can either follow that guide and walk around and look for them for yourself, or you can just kind of look as you go. The items fall under one of five overarching themes, community, transformation, service, innovation, and art, and cover early settlers to present day. And while certainly some of the selected items on display are a bit shall we say, obvious? Social history curator Bridget Jones says most of the artifacts in this special exhibit are more subtle. To me, it means that all of the history that is usually overlooked is finally being represented. Looking at this beautiful Conestoga wagon, you might miss surveyor Daniel Smith's compass, which he used to survey the land that is now Nashville. This exhibit reminds us that it's these smaller stories that tie our history together. Small stories, huge impact, like this chair crafted by a man who was born into slavery and later moved with his master to Williamson County. The Richard Pointer chair is interesting because it's also going to take us back to the uh, era of enslavement. And the Richard Pointer chair was amazing because Richard Pointer was well known as an artesian for crafting those chairs. He was so well known that crafting those chairs allowed him to purchase his own freedom in 1850. Nashvillians will find this one familiar. It once lit the way to the famous downtown record shop owned by country music's Ernest Tubb, who also hosted the in-house long-running Midnight Jamboree radio show, featuring up-and-coming artists like Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline. This sign that we have on display is the original sign. It was installed in 1947 and removed in 1960 when it was eventually replaced. It's this beacon for country music that we have on display in the museum that brought people to downtown Nashville in the early days of the honky tonks. Telling the story of Tennessee's rich history means telling all of it, even the difficult chapters. The exhibit's Coven's Brick, for example, is from the Coven's Brickyard in Memphis, where three black men, a local grocery store owner and his two employees were lynched in 1892. And they owned a grocery store in Memphis called the People's Grocery Store. An altercation ensued and they were lynched. Ida B. Wells is gonna write about that and that's part of the reason that she fled Memphis a little bit after that. This deep dive into Tennessee's past also includes items from the state's not so distant past. So much happening in our world today and objects like the Pat Summit Vest not only honor the contributions of Tennesseans who have definitely dominated in sports and other areas that you typically wouldn't think women would dominate in, but it also allows Tennesseans to see that there is no ceiling for anybody and everything is achievable if you work for it. 
While you're looking at that Lady Vol vest, you might want to drop your eyes a bit lower to the small wire sculpture beneath. The artist, Benoit Streeter, nicknamed Wire Man, was born in 1919 Wartrace. Streeter grew up on what would become a Tennessee walking horse farm and learned at an early age how to groom and train horses, a clear inspiration in much of his artwork. So we have this wire sculpture of a Tennessee walking horse with an African-American trainer and a top hat and coattails sitting on top. And that really was his trademark sculpture. 100 artifacts, 100 stories, woven throughout an already impressive collection. It's a history lesson, sort of a Cliff's Notes version of what it means to be a part of the volunteer state. 225 years and counting. Tennessee is a distinct place that shaped the nation. Seeing this stamp, I guess, that Tennesseans have left on the long history of the state and how what it means to kind of be a part of that social fabric and how we can contribute to that and continue to mold what it means to be a Tennessean today.